Welcome back to Community Storytelling Season 4, Episode, I don't know, there have been so many. And Linda Lester and Lester Square, thank you for your support. I'm Lisa Chrysler, so glad to have you with us today. And we've been getting out and about meeting some people who we said, you know what, you got to come in and sit down with us because you have stories to tell. That's what Community Storytelling is all about. And we've met some exceptional senior citizens. Los Gatos has a very large senior citizen population. And it's like, I meet these people and I say, you need to sit next to me and you need to tell your story because it's a good one. And I have Charlie and Charlie, I don't even know your last name. Woo. Well, that's easy that's to a... remember. Thank you. <laughs> very short. Very right. short, very short and sweet. Charlie, how long have you lived in Los Gatos? Uh, since 1966. All right. Can I ask how old you are? Yes, I'm 82. Men never mind. No. You know, the women say, oh, I'll answer, <laughs> but the men never mind. And you also look fabulous for being 82. Oh, thank you. Now, where were you born? I was born in Kobe, Japan. I'm Chinese, but I was born there because my father was in the diplomatic service. Ah. Yeah, he was in Japan at the time. Diplomatic service for Japan? No, no, for the Chinese Nationalist Government. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, because we were at war, Japan and, and uh, China was at war, mm -hmm. so he was recalled back and I left about a month after I was born there. And we went back to, uh, to China and uh, then we, we landed in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So we were in Hong Kong until <clears throat> in 1941. What happened was, you know, there was a Pearl Harbor attack here, right? Yes. But there was also a coordinated attack in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. Philippines, and various parts of Asia. And we were there when the Japanese um, military invaded Hong Kong. And so we were taken, my father was taken, you know, by the Japanese. Uh, well, well, he wasn't arrested, but they were interviewed, you know, okay. they would interrogate him uh -huh. because he's from the foreign government. So we were put up in a really fancy hotel. I was a little kid then, um, overlooking the bay. The problem is these fancy hotels were all glass windows, you know. And then uh, when you look on the bay, you saw these Japanese battleships and they were, they were firing cannons oh. overhead. And the whole building shake as, a, as a, you know, the, the shells go across. So my mom was really scared. You think? So, yeah. So instead of, you know, uh, living in that nice apartment sure. in there, we were, she took us out in the hallway where oh. we can't see. <laughs> wow. But how long so, did you stay in the hallway? Well, we stayed, I think we stayed there about a week, I think. In the hallway? Yeah, so in the that hallway. you would not yeah, be near us, the windows. Yeah, and then oh. and then at nighttime, this Japanese um, military patrol comes through. They patrol in the mm -hmm. area, right? But anyway, to make the story short, uh, after about a couple of weeks, uh, they released my father to, to go, and they gave us safe passage to to go to China. So. And then, but you ended up in America. How'd that happen? Well, okay. That's first of part of the story. Anyway, during the war, we traveled all over China just to get away from the Ar Japanese army. Mm -hmm. right? Then in 1945, uh, when Japan surrendered, my father was sent to Japan now as part of the Allied Occupation Force. So um, in 1946, he was sent there into Japan. And in 1947, he sent for us and we joined him in Tokyo. So I stayed there from 1947 to 1957. And then you ended up here. Yeah, three well, years before there, there's you moved more to, to that story. There's more to that. How did I learn, you know, how did I learn to speak English? Good well, question. Yeah, so um, I was in third grade at the time when we went to Japan. No, fourth grade, Chinese, you know, Chinese school. But, um, uh, <clears throat> when we went to Japan, the Chinese schools were very poor because right after the war, you know, the, the standards are not very high. Sure. So my father put me and my brother into the U.S. military dependent school. There were schools for the U.S. Army, you know. So we got there, and that's how I learned English. 
I grew up with all the army brats, you know. I loved these kids. And uh, I learned to speak American instead of English. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> when I first went to f the third grade, I, w yeah, I was home back a year. Um, I never seen American kids before. I, never, I didn't know how to speak one word of English. But I had some great teachers, you know, my, my third grade teacher was Mrs. Fleming. I still remember her. She worked very hard with, you know, they tried to teach us English. And the kids were great, you know, they, they, they you know, after um, maybe two or three months, we were able to get signals and communicate somehow. And after six months, I was able to talk with them in kind of a broken English. Sure. But, yeah. And your parents could not speak English. My parents, they, they could speak English, but not very well. Okay. Uh, so I went through the military school all the way to sixth grade. I, I loved every class I had. Um, uh, it was quite an experience for me, you know, as a little kid and uh, growing up with American kids. So in seventh grade, my parents decided that um, I was getting to be too much like a little you know, the army brats. So I need some discipline, so they sent me to a Catholic high school. And so in seventh grade through 10th grade, I went to the Catholic high school. And uh, that was another experience, you know, going from a very, in the, in the U.S. Army school, you know, they were very relaxed, you know, the, I mean, kids. Sure. And, and, and they were, you know, were quite free to, to say things and do things, you know, and the teacher, were, you know, very tolerant. The Catholic school is very a different. A little tougher. <laughs> yeah, they, they, right. had, they had rulers, yeah. <laughs> rulers and yardsticks behind right, the desk. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the other thing, you know, I had to live up to my brother's image because he was the first one to, to, to go to the Catholic school. You know, um, he went in seventh grade. I was going to go to sixth grade, but I didn't make it, you know. So I went the next year, and when I went to the next year to uh, to interview, you know, to, to try to get into school. All the brothers, you know, they were taught by brothers. They all ta looked at me and they said, you know, your brother is such an outstanding student, you know, we're going to let you in, you know, on a trial basis. I said, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so my brother's with image I have to live up to all, all the way through. And, Sweet. Uh, and uh, he, was, he was a good kid, you know, yeah. good young man. And so did the whole family come over? Yeah, the whole family came over in 1947. All to, right. To, no, no, not here, to Japan. Oh, to Japan, yeah, okay. So I went to uh, school in Japan. I graduated in 1957, met a lot of people. Uh, I was in the Cub Scout den with um, uh, Arthur MacArthur. You've probably heard of him, you know, he's General MacArthur's son. And I met a lot of uh, nice people like Joe Lewis when he came over to wow. Japan. Yeah, I yeah. got a picture taken you know, with, with Joe Lewis, yeah. yeah. And then when I was in high school, um, we had uh, Jackie Robinson came to talk to our high school class. Really? By the way, I went to the Amer I graduated from the American School in Japan, a what we call ASIJ. Mm -hmm. And so I met a lot of very nice people. Uh, one of my classmates, was named uh, Anne Reichauer, who's the daughter of the ambassador to to Japan, Dr. Reichauer, who was a, of course, after I left the school, he was appointed by uh, President Kennedy to be the president, uh, to be the ambassador to Japan for the United States. So, so influential people. A so, lot of people. so when I'm still trying to figure out how you got to America. Okay. So in 1957. Um, I I got a letter of acceptance from a small college in Puget Sound, you know, that's up in Washington. Yes. So I um, I was going to go. Now my parents not very rich, so and my brother was already in a, in a uh, kind of a Ivy League school mm -hmm. in in uh, uh, New York, the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, right? So I know I can't. My parents aren't going to be able to support both of us. So before I left, I told my parents not to worry. I'm going to take care of myself, and I'm going to get a degree. So my parents said, OK. My father gave me $250 and a sh steamship ticket. That was it. And then uh, 
fortunately, just before I left, uh, he got a um, telegram from his friend, who is the uh, uh, the consul general of, of the Chinese government in Houston, Texas. So he said, "We have a job opening for a secretary because our secretary just just you know got married and she had to leave." So my father, this is last minute. So my father told him, asked me, "Do you want to be a secretary?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah." You know, I mean, <laughs> so there I go, off. You know, and then uh, I left Japan in towards the end of August. Yeah. And took the ship, and I was seasick for 14 days all the way through <laughs> because of a brand new. <coughs> it was a brand new freighter. Yeah. And. It didn't have any cargo in it, so it was flowing way above his waterline. So I was bounced all the way. Oh my goodness! So we landed in um, in Oakland, in uh, and when I landed in Oakland, the minute I got off the ship, I was fine, no seasickness. So from there, I took a train to Houston. There were some funny stories, you know. Um, when I got to Houston, my my uncle, he was the vice counselor, he was going to come and pick me up in train station, except the train got there uh, like six o'clock in the morning and it was like, you know, an hour early. So when I got there, uh, I want to, I've been on a train for three days, so I want to clean up and, you know, and so I went to the uh, waiting room. There was nobody there. So I sat around hoping somebody would come so they could tell me where the bathroom is. So finally, I decided to go out in the hallway, and I saw this this, this uh, bathroom. You know, one says white, the other says color. You know, so I didn't know which one to go. So I saw this uh, older older man walking down the you know the hallway. So you know, I was 18 years old. I didn't know anything. So I grabbed him by the arm and said, "Hey, Mister, you know, uh, which one should I go into?" He looks at me up and down. White, of course. Oh, I said, "Of course." So I went in there. You know. <laughs> That was the first time, <laughs> you know, that I come in, uh, to experience, you know, the, the segregation. Sure. But, and, it, you know, and, and I just, you know. You, well, you became was, a successful engineer. Okay. You got Move settled my, in yeah. Los Gatos. Right. And now you're retired. You retired, retired at what age? 60? 60 years old. 60. And now you devote your, your energy here to, to other the seniors. seniors. Yeah, I, I love that. When I first started, after I retired, I started looking up all my high school friends. So I started reunion, you know, for the high school uh, mm -hmm. classmates and stuff. And then in the 2010, I think I, I stumbled onto uh, the senior dance that they have once a month. Mm -hmm. And I got to know Janet, uh, who ran the, ran the thing. So I volunteered for that, and and I worked with Janet until um, until the pandemic shut it down. Mm -hmm. okay. Then in 2012, I joined the um, you know through Mary Beth, I joined the uh, the Life of a Senior Nutrition mm -hmm. Center on the board, and then we, we went that until now. Now I have other projects. I'm rebuilding my little house, my dream house where I'm going to retire in. Yeah. That you're going to retire in I'm again. Retire again. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I, I have a big house now. It's too big for me. You know? Yeah. So. So you, you, but it's interesting and so very sweet to hear that you are trying to help other seniors. I mean, you're fine. You're yeah. doing great. Yeah. You could just live like that. Well, you know, the reason I'm doing great is because, you know, I was given a, a tr you know, a tremendous opportunity by this great country that I came over, you know, um, and you know the opportunity that this country gave me is um, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. So because I've been fortunate in becoming an engineer and working in Silicon Valley and designing chips and stuff, I, I want to you know I had a good life, so I want to give some of this back to the community, however you know that could help. That's wonderful. Yeah, and and I hope I'm doing. I would like to do my part, you know, to 
I think you mm-hmm. are. Yeah. I think you already are. Yeah. But is there something more that you would like to see the town do for seniors? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that I, I know the senior really liked was uh, be able to go dancing, you know? Yeah. And they remember, um, you know, the fox trials and you sure. know, all this, all these old dances. Sure. That, you know, the, you know, so, and I Could see- Could you teach them? Um, You're pretty good? <laughs> I'm pretty, I guess I'm pretty good, you know, I'm, for myself, but I don't know if I'm a good teacher, but I know some people that are really good, you know, they know so how to teach. So we need to get some dances going again. Right, you some know. Some community events where you can sit and chat, chat not just, chat. you know, not right. just go to a class and learn something, but to no. enjoy each so other's company. So they could you know, sit there and they could, they could talk, you know, talk about old times and talk about the dances, you know. Yeah. You know, talk about when they were young, you know, how they were, you know. I like that. that. We're gonna so, put you in charge. Hey, You're I'm, in charge of the dance committee. Hey, I, I would love it. You know? I love it too, <laughs> that's great. Oh, well, I hope when you see Charlie around town, you, you wave to him or pull him over, give him yeah. some of your ideas perhaps, or maybe you'll see him at the next dance. Got to get those going one of these days soon, once it's safe. Right. But you're a wonderful gentleman, and thank the you. town of Los Gatos is lucky to have you as a resident. Thank you very much. So I, thank you and good luck to you, and may you live another 82 years. Thank you. (laughs) Community (laughs) storytelling. Yeah, that sounds silly, but you never know, right? Uh, If you've got somebody you'd like to nominate, I would love to sit and chat with him or her at kcat.org is how you do it. And please keep joining me for community storytelling on KCAT TV 15. I'm Lisa Chrysler.